everybody, welcome to the Black Sheep Props channel. I'm Steve, and I'm here to teach you the tips, tools, techniques, and materials for building your very own super cool EVA foam props. Now, in our last episode, making an EVA foam Doom Hammer Part 2, we knocked out the entire rest of the prop. We finished all the details on our hammerhead, and we cranked out, boom, that's right, the super cool handle. And man, was it awesome. And, uh, Everything went down like a glove, nothing was hard. A couple little parts were a little bit tricky, like getting the the uh, column inside the middle of the hammerhead, but that was the hardest part. Everything else has been pretty darn simple. Um, and it turned out perfect. Uh, which means, in this episode, making an EVA foam, Doom Hammer Part 3, we're gonna seal this bad boy with black Plasti Dip, get a nice black rubber coat on it, and then we are going to come in with our acrylics and we're going to paint it up, man. We're going to get it all distressed looking. We're going to paint the hammerhead in like three different tones of gray. So we've got a little bit of texture change in there so it has that kind of cement feel. We're going to do all of our gold rivets. Uh, we're going to do our three different brown colors inside our wrap. Um, we're going to do the wood detail, which is going to be super cool. And it's easy. All this is so super easy. You'll totally be able to nail this. Um, so, if you're ready to hit it, let's make something. All right, we're out at the spray stand. We're going to begin spraying our doom hammer. Remember, we say it every time, do not spray even outside without your respirator. All right, there we go. Man, we got this baby sealed with a bunch of layers of Plasti Dip. Look at that. Nice and coated in black rubber. That is sweet. Just like we always do, you just keep coming at it from a bunch of different directions, getting in all the cracks and crevices. And that thing is coated. Very nice. All right, here we go. We're gonna come in with our silver. Now sometimes we spray paint and sometimes we use the foam brushes. We like to use the foam brushes for the more ancient or antique or rustic sort of props. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in and we're going to begin dabbing around all the way around our piece. All right, that's simple. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep rotating around the whole piece. Okay, there we go. We've got the end of the handle covered with one layer of silver. Now we're gonna, now we're gonna come in and we're just gonna start hitting these three details right here. All right, now it doesn't matter if we get a little silver down in here, well, we're going to be painting the wood color because we can cover that. All 
All right, there we go. We've got the silver end. We've got the three silver collars and we have the silver end. Very easy. And we don't really have to be careful because we can go ahead and cover it and we can come in afterwards and paint the rest around it. Okay, now we're going to come in with our modeling tape. We're going to slip down in here. We don't have to get too too tight in there. We're just going to get just want to cover up our silver so when we come in with our brown we don't start messing everything up. All right, take a look. Spent a little time. We got the edges of our silver part taped off. Now we're going to come in with our raw sienna. Now, since we're taped off, we should be good to go. There we go, just like that. No, we're not. All right, there we go. We've got our raw sienna all the way around. Our three. Give that a little bit of time to dry. All right, now we're going to come in with our real brown. Just like that. All right, now check out what we're doing here. We're See what we did there? Notice how we did a stripe here, and now here we did a thinner stripe, and notice what it's starting to do. It's starting to make that slight tonal change similar to the way wood does. So. There we go. Go around the bottom edge a little bit to get a slightly darker stripe. We can go a little bit around that top edge too, just like that. And then we'll just dab little slight bits inside the light areas just to break it up a little bit all right and we're not done yet that's only the first two steps let's give that a few minutes to dry up okay now what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our brush we're going to take our brown and we're going to come in and we're going to And we're going to start putting in little strokes. Just like that. All right, there we go. We put our light layer down first. Then we put our slightly darker brown layer. Then we went in with our brush and we hit little fine little strokes in there just to get a wood grain going. Now we're gonna make a small little black pile here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix some brown and black together because we want to get a really dark. All right, see that? We've got our brown right here, we've got our black right here, and we've got an in-between right here. So now we're going to come in in these dark areas and put our same little lines in, just like that. See that? All right, there we go. Check that out. We've got four steps here. We covered the whole thing with our raw sienna to get a light brown. Then we went in with our real brown and we added some thick and thin striping all the way around to add two tones. Then we came back in with our real brown on the light sections and we did little 
wood grain lines inside the light sections. And then we mixed our black with our real brown and we went into the dark brown sections and we added some little wood grains in there. So from two feet away, it gives off that nice wood grain texture. Oh wait, I missed a spot right here. Now we're gonna get in here. We're gonna pull our tape off. Oh wow, is that sweet. All right, here we go. Take this all off. Perfect, except for that little mistake right there, which we can fix, no problem. Uh, looks great, absolutely. All right, now we're gonna come in with our brush. All right, so check out right in here. We covered it up with our raw sienna, then we came back in with our brown, repaired a couple of the little wood grain stripes right in here and when it dries you won't even tell the difference. This time we're going to come in here and we're going to tape around this bottom edge of our silver piece and the top edge of that silver piece. So that All right, we did this before. We're just going to go all the way around here and here with our All right, now we're going to make a super dark brown for this handle. So we're going to come in with our regular brown and we're going to come in with our black. We're going to mix the two up. And we're going to start going over the whole thing right down the middle. That is almost black, but it's not. It has a little bit of brown in it. Right, now we're going to come to this back side here. It's just subtle enough to where it does not look black. It looks just off black with a slight brown hint in it. Okay, I'm going to come in and get this guy out of here. Look at that. See how that looks like a super dark brown? And then we're going to come in after it dries and we're going to hit some light tones in there. So. Let's give it some time. All right, so what we just did is we got our sponge brush out and our black and we got it really dry and we got down in here where the pieces meet together because we wanted to get it nice and dark. We just really darkened it up inside the two crevices right here. Now we're going to come in with our brown. All right, see that? Nice. We're coming in there with a lighter shade of brown now. And we're just going to hit it on some areas. Just We're going to hit the brown on some of the high parts just like that. Because the high parts is where it would probably wear a little bit. All right, there we go. We coated it with a super dark brown that was almost black, and then we came in with our regular brown, and we just hit it in some high spots and in some other areas just to have it changing tones back and forth from brown to super dark, dark brown. Very cool. Wow. Okay, here we go. We're gonna coat this whole entire head of the hammer with our medium gray. Now we can. And we're going to start going all over the whole thing. Just like that. And as you can tell, all the crevices are gonna remain dark because we're using a sponge brush and that's exactly the look we want. So we're just gonna start going over the whole thing real loose. Like that. All right.
All right, we got the whole thing covered. Now we're gonna come in with our brush and we're gonna- There we go, nice. That's what we want. We wanna get in there nice and tight. But we're still gonna leave a tiny little black inside piece because we want it to look a little bit like there's dirt in the crevice. That's it. All right, there we go. We got the whole thing covered. Underneath, on top. Nine. All right, we're coming in with our metallic gold. All right, now this is going to take a few coats because this happens once in a while with our paint where it doesn't want to lay down and cover. We're going to build up our gold layers. All right, there we go. We're just going to go all the way around and we're going to get them all covered with one layer. And then when it dries, we'll come in and coat them again. All right, now we're going to come in and we're going to hit in here with a layer of gold also around these rivets. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to cover it with a layer. All right, now we're going to come in and start putting our second coat on. Oh yeah, that's filling in now. Nice. Perfect. Now we'll, we're going to go over all of our gold rivets. We're going... All right, now we're going to come in and get all of our big rivets covered in gold. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to have to come in and do several coats on this because one coat won't stick. All right, there we go. We've got one kind of uneven layer down. Now it looks a little see-through right now, but that's okay because we've got the whole thing covered. That's what counts. And then when it dries, we'll go back over it with another layer and it'll look as bold as those do. All right, just keep going around all the rest of them. We got 20 of them. All right, there we go. There's all 20 of our rivets painted in one layer of gold. I'm gonna give them a couple minutes to dry, then we're gonna hit them with a second coat. And all right, we're getting our second coat on all 20 of our rivets. Starting to fill in nicely. All right, we're gonna come in and we're gonna start taping right around this little cord detail because we want to go in and paint the cords gold. Now we've got it along the bottom. We might not tape the top piece off. Okay, there we go. There's one layer. And we're going to wait till it dries and we're going to hit it with another layer. Start putting our second coat down. All right, there we go. There's our second coat. Looks like we might be pretty good and we might hit it with a third because that's our neoprene rubber cord and it's handling a little funky with the paint. So looking pretty good, almost there. We're going to let it dry and do one more coat. we go. Not bad. Cool. Got a couple little spots we're going to touch up with the silver. We're going to come in with our sponge, get it covered. Come in here on our wolf head. I assume it's a wolf head. All right, now we're going to come in with our brush 
and we're going to get all these edges using the square edge of the brush we're going to come in and just hit our edge all the way around super easy. Now we're just going to come in and we're going to use the square edge of our brush and we're going to do our little circle detail. Just keep going all the way around. All right now we're just going to do the exact same thing but on this side. And just go all the way around the inside. All right, there we go, that easy. Now we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do that circle on that side. All right, there we go. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our medium gray and we're gonna take our black. That's actually not quite dark enough. There we go, and we just tap it around like that. We're just getting some little speckles on there of the darker gray. Now let's see if we can get in here and All right, now we just gotta go around the whole thing doing that. All right, there we go, see that? See how it's just got slight patches of dark on there, just to break it up a little bit. All right, there we go, we've dirtied it up. All right, now we're going to do our washing technique. We're gonna bring in our brown and our black. There's some brown. And there's some black. A little bit of water. And we're gonna paint it on here like this. And then this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna come in with our paper towel. There we go, dirtied it up. I'm gonna come around to this side, do the same thing. We're gonna paint it on. Nice. And it leaves stains around and stuff in the corners on our end. And we're going to Very nice. All right. We're going to dab it on. There we go. That is leaving a nice dirty stain. Let's come in. It's very wet. And you just dab it with the paper towel. and get all in here like this. And then we're gonna come in. All right, see that? Look at how it left all that grunge around everything. That's nice. All right, so we came in, we have our regular gray down, then we mixed up a slightly darker gray and dappled it around a little bit. And then we came in with our wash and it kind of just adds an extra little layer of cruddiness around there. Dab it a little bit, and it leaves some stained up business around there. Pretty nice, I like that. It's hard to not freak out when you're watching your paint job get all dirty, but. All right, there we go. Dirty on that side, on the ends, 
on the front. We did our wash on the top, got everything dirty and dabbed it off with our paper towel so it's got that stained up effect. Came down across here, dirtied up around the handle in there like that. Just enough to stain it up. Wow, that turned out great. So we and with that, our doom hammer comes to a close. Man, was that awesome. Everything turned out perfect. Uh, paint went down super easy. You saw how easy that was. Um, looking good. And we used our little bit of our wash technique with the brown and the black paint in the water to dirty it up. Um, we went in like we talked about earlier with our three tones of brown to make this look like really dark brown leather that's kind of worn off in some spots. Um, and the wood detail. That is super cool. Let's see if we can get a close look at that. There you go. Look at that with the nice little wood grain on there. Man was that cool and super easy. So that concludes making an EVA foam doom hammer part three. Hope you liked it. If you did give us a like, share us with a friend and subscribe to this channel. And together we're going to go step by step through a lot more super cool builds so that you get the props you deserve. Thanks for coming. See you next time.